Hey guys, in this video, we are going to talk about the command design pattern. Now, before we jump into the code, we should first understand why this design pattern exists or is important. So one of the practical examples that I'm going to give you is uh, in a game or in a multiplayer scenario or a multi-user scenario where you have more than one people present at the same place and you perform some action and uh, all the other people on their devices would like to see you perform the action. So similarly, if someone else performs any action, you would like to uh, see them performing certain actions in your device. So this is where you use a command pattern. Now, there is another example which is very simple and very common, which is when you want to perform undo and redo. So what you do is you have a list of commands uh, stored in a stack or a queue, and then you can easily undo or redo those commands. So let me give you uh, a simple example by showing this diagram on the screen. So in this diagram, we can see that uh, we have a simple game manager, which directly controls the gameplay. And this basically has some indirect control to the gameplay using some logic that goes on. The game manager is also uh, communicating with a lot of controllers. And uh, one of the controllers or the handler is the input handler. Usually in an application or a game, the input handler's responsibility is to gather the input from the user through various hardware devices and then raise an event. So here the game manager basically uh, communicates with the input handler to initialize it. And uh, once the input handler is initialized, uh, you can see right here that the game supports keyboard, mouse, joystick, gamepad, or any VR controllers. So whenever the user performs any action on uh, the keyboard, mouse, or the gamepad, let's say the user wants to perform a jump. In this scenario, the user might press the space bar key on a keyboard and uh, press the A button on the gamepad, like the Xbox controller. So the input handler is just going to tell the game manager that, hey, this kind of an event has been raised, okay? And the event basically might have multiple subscribers. So here, based on the context of the game, a specific action would be taken. Now, why I'm focusing on the keyword action is because whenever we are, you know, in an application or in a game, we uh, usually call methods and functions. But if we call them as actions, it becomes easy to encapsulate them. It's just an analogy, like verbally we are saying uh, this, but when we see the code, is going to be uh, methods after all, or functions. So once uh, in this scenario, let's say uh, there is a cast a spell function which is being called. And again, this is an action which is being performed. So the user uh, presses some key on the keyboard or some uh, button on the gamepad. And then there is an event raised and whatever uh, or whichever subscriber that has subscribed to this event based on the context, will basically call this cast a spell method. So let me just scroll down and take you through this diagram. We have so many clients, like about four clients, and then we have a server. So what happens is the client will basically uh, cast a spell, which is an uh, action. But instead of it performing the action, it will issue a command. When I say issue a command, it is just creating, creating an object and it is uh, enqueuing that in a queue or a stack. And this goes to the server, and then the server broadcasts this uh, command to all the clients, and then the avatar, uh, whether it be client A, B, C, or D, wherever the avatar is, that avatar will perform an action uh, because it has now received a command. So what happens is, once the input is received, the game manager will enqueue the command, and once the uh, command is enqueued, the game manager will as the multiplayer service to broadcast it to all clients and the command will be then dequeued. So after the command is dequeued, it will be performed or executed as well. So this is a very simple example, how you can implement your command design pattern. All right, so let's jump into the code. So right now I have a simple Unity scene. We have a main camera, directional light. There's a player, which is a cube. <laughs> So we make it just as simple as possible. And we have a ground plane and some basic game object that does a bit of game management. 
All right, so we'll be first creating a command base class. And if you see right here on my screen, I have a simple empty command class with two virtual functions, which is execute and undo. And we are providing an argument to these uh, functions, which is a transform T. This is uh, very basic so that you can access any components if required. Okay, so let me give you a gist of what we are going to do uh, in this video. So we are using an input handler to handle or capture the input. And if you see, we are tapping into a couple of keys like the arrow keys, space, return, and backspace. So let's take a look at what happens when you click on any of these arrow keys. So whenever you click on the arrow keys, the input manager is going to create a new command and it will raise an event, all right? So the kind of event that it raises is basically input receive uh, raised and uh, the type is on input receive. So this basically, you know, is responsible to provide the command to its subscribers. Now, whenever the input handler raises an event, uh, we have a subscriber, which is the player controller right here. So if you see the player controller script, we basically have a command stack and in the start function, we are creating a new command stack and we are subscribing to two events, which is on input received and uh, on undo raised. So these two are the events, but we'll first take a look at what happens when the input is received. So whenever the input is received with this command, we execute the command and then push the command into the stack. Whenever the um, object is destroyed, we clear the stack and unsubscribe from the events. So this is very straightforward and simple. And we will come to the undo part later. So as I said earlier that we are going to encapsulate all the actions in commands. Uh, I have a couple of commands that I have made here. So let's take a look at the very first command, which is the move command. Now, if you go to the input handler, you must have seen that uh, I have created a new object of type move command and it takes in uh, an argument which is the direction. So let's take a look at this class. Now the move command derives from the command class and it has a variable uh, member which is direction. And uh, the constructor basically takes in a direction as an argument and we set the direction right here. So what happens when this command is executed is basically uh, this command executes on this transform T and it translates in the direction. So if you see it translates in the direction and it does the translate and it performs the translation in the local space. Similarly, for undo, what we do is we translate the same transform in the negative direction. So it's very straightforward, like move commands are the simplest and hence, here you are creating an object and in player controller, you are basically stacking it. Now what happens when you undo? So whenever you click on the backspace key, we raise an event which is called the undo on undo raised. And in the player controller, like I mentioned earlier, we have uh, subscribed to the undo command as well. And in the undo command, what we do is we check if the command stack is empty and then we pop the command and then we undo. Basically, we call the undo with uh, a transform. So let's quickly jump to Unity and check if this basic thing works. Now let's move the player in some direction and let's undo. So if you see, it works perfectly fine. Now let's take a look at the animate command. So in the animate command class, it uh, basically derives from the command class and um, we are just simply setting the trigger of an animator. So if you see, it has a trigger uh, variable, which is a string, and then the animate command constructor has uh, an argument, which is trigger. And this is how we are setting up the trigger, that's it. In the execute, what we do is we simply get the animator component. If the animator component is there, then we, uh, I don't need to basically set this float. I was doing this so that we can reverse the animation, but I could not find a very simple way out and there were a couple of hacks. So I'm not going to apply this hack right now. Uh, all we simply do is we just set the trigger 
and the name of the trigger. So if you go to the input handler and check this code right here, which is on space key, I create an animation command or animate command. And I have provided it a trigger name. So it's like a string. And I again raise this event, like input receive raised. And whenever this event is raised, the player controller will simply execute the command and push it to the stack. Now there is nothing that we can undo here because in the animate command, there is no uh, undo method. So the animation will not get reversed. But if you have a reverse animation that you want to play, you can create a reverse animation and set that trigger as well. Now let's move the player and press the spacebar key. So the cube rotates and it rotates perfectly fine. Now if I undo for the first two times, nothing happens. But later on, the movement uh, commands get reversed. I have also created one more command, which is the spawn command. Now in the spawn command, this class is set up uh, to create or spawn objects. And let's take a look at this class. So it derives again from the command class. And uh, if you see, it has a prefab, a game object, and the name of the game object. The constructor basically takes in the name and uh, the prefab to instantiate. And the setup is done right here. In the execute method, we first instantiate the prefab and then give it a name. Then we set the position randomly. And here I'm just giving some random color to the object. That's it. In undo, we simply destroy the game object. If it is not null, that's it. We simply destroy the game object. And in the input handler, if you see, uh, the enter key is responsible to create a new spawn command object. And again, it raises an event with this command. Now, the player controller has subscribed to this command, so hence it will go right here. And the command will be executed and pushed to the stack. So let's see how the spawn command works. So we'll try all the three commands. First, we will move, rotate, and then spawn a couple of objects right here. And if you see, it gets spawned right here. And I can press the backspace key so that it undoes all the commands. Let's mix this. Move, rotate, spawn, 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 move, spawn, move. And there you go. All these commands get undoed properly. With this video, I would just like to say that uh, my take on the command pattern is that it is basically an encapsulation of an action performed by an object. So I hope you found this useful. And if you do uh, get across any idea of how the animations can be reversed, do let me know in the comment box. And thank you so much for watching.